In late July 2014, an email was received to Cop Block. The subject line was, Help! Urgent help needed. I happened to be sitting in front of my computer at the time and opened it. I read that a Whittier, California couple, home in their apartment, was at that moment surrounded by armed strangers wearing badges. I called the number provided and spoke with Trevor and Christina. They both communicated to me the same version of events and their concern about the police waiting outside. Christina, upon learning of her best friend's dad being brought to the hospital, had started crying, loudly. Trevor described it as a panic attack. A neighbor, rather than looking into the situation herself and maybe even consoling Christina, had instead called the police. The police had blocked off the street, entered the apartment building, covered the peephole in Trevor and Christina's front door, and demanded they exit. Trevor and Christina were justifiably scared. I encouraged Trevor to film, and better yet, to stream. Trevor had set up a bamboozer account and started to document his dialogue with the police employees outside. What? Yes. Okay, Jim. Okay. Okay. Sure. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll eventually come outside. What you're trying to do right now is convince me it's safe. So that's not going to be a one second move. My wife, listen, my wife's best friend, father was rushed to the hospital. He's been dying of cancer. Today we get the message to pray for him because he's in critical condition and they're trying to pump all the fluids out of his lungs. You know what happened? She freaks out and cried, ran to the bathroom, hysterically crying, choking on her own tears, hyperventilating because she has panic attacks. I try to comfort her and then 30, 45 minutes later somebody bangs on my door aggressively, unannounced, terrifying us. Now you're here telling me I have to be handcuffed? But I'm scared for my life. Look at this, man. I am scared for my life. And you don't even understand that. I'm a human. And I'm terrified that you guys are going to cuff me and shoot me and throw me to the ground and beat me and do things that are not right because it happens. You may be a good cop, but not every cop is good. Just like not every citizen is good. You put, you put tape over my people so I can't even feel safe coming out in my hallway. It, it is personal for me. And I want to come outside. I don't know why it escalated to the point where you have this many officers here. But the thing is, I feel like I trust you. I don't feel the, the trust in the man who pointed a gun at my head. That's the first part I have a real big problem with. You know what? I don't know who's waiting in the building for me. I don't know who's going to grab me and tackle me. I've seen the videos, sir. I also tweeted via Coplock's profile about the situation and encouraged anyone nearby to respond and document from the ground. I then called the Whittier police outfit to encourage their actors to de-escalate and to inform them that others were now paying attention to their actions. Yeah, hi, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records, but I just received an email and I had a conversation with an individual. Yeah, hi, I want to let you know I'm recording this call for my records, but I just uh, received a email communication and had a phone conversation with a gentleman and spoke with him and his wife. They're at a Bailey Street address in Whittier, and he provided pictures and said that the street's being blocked off and that some Whittier police employees just pointed firearms at him. And I was just calling to encourage y'all to work to de-escalate the situation instead of needlessly take someone's life. It sounds like a situation where things are okay and nobody requires the so-called services of your colleagues. And thus, I hope that you could communicate that to them. Okay, what was your name? Right now, that's unimportant. I'm just somebody who wants to prevent another unjust, um, you know, deadly force example. And I, I hope that uh, you can communicate to your colleagues not to uh, to aggravate a situation where they're not needed right now. Well, that's the, the last thing we, we want to do is escalate the thing. We just need to talk to him. Okay, well, his okay, right now I don't. So you're familiar with the situation then? Yes. Uh huh. Okay, and can you mind? Could you let me know of your name, please? Lieutenant Reese. Can you spell that for me? R U I Z. 
R U I Z. Okay, so are are you aware that your colleagues may have potentially just pulled firearms and pointed them at the direction of the, their residence? No, I know that we're trying to talk to him. Okay, when you say we, are you actually there talking to them? Or are you speaking for your colleagues? Because individuals are responsible for their actions. So right now, I encourage you to contact. Are you are you are you, are you in a position where you can come down and, and talk to him? Is he a friend of yours? Right now, what I would hope you would do is communicate with your colleagues. You could put me on hold if you need to, but communicate with your colleagues and tell them to holster their firearms if they've, in fact, been pulled and, and not to, to even think of resorting to such a, a weapon in this situation. I talked both with Trevor and his wife. They both sounded, uh, you know, in, in spite of the situation, collected. They, neither of them uh, sounded like they needed y'all's uh, so-called services. Can you uh, can you communicate with your colleagues not to uh, introduce firearms to the situation? I'd be glad to hold while that happens. I'll let them know. I spoke again with Trevor and Christina. He wondered whether they should exit, fully aware that if they didn't, the police may eventually ram open their door and enter with their guns drawn, claiming all the while that their action, which would rightly be called breaking and entering if done by you or me, was okay since their friend who wears black robes had said so. I told Trevor that only they could decide what was best for themselves in that situation, but that if they did decide to exit, they should communicate clearly and not make any sudden moves to mitigate the chance that the police employees could claim that they were scared for their safety and shoot at them. How many police are in the building now? How many officers are inside of this building? Everything sounds wonderful until you decide to not honor what you said you'll do. Sir, I've watched hundreds of videos where people have been lied to by the cops. Because you have officers hidden in the building, which means nobody outside would see me. Whatever happens to either one of us in the building is behind closed doors for you to assume it's the way you said it happened. Oh, we resisted, so you beat me into the ground and killed me. You shot me because I pulled out a, a gun, which was a cell phone. You know, I can see how cleverly it gets changed, so I die and nobody hears from me again. Officer, what about Eric Gardner in New York City was just put in a chokehold and died over selling cigarettes? That man died over, over possibly selling cigarettes. Yes, it is tragic, and how do we know not more tragedies are going to happen? This is a scary time in America. I want to make sure it doesn't happen. That's why I'm contacting people to come down here to be witnesses. I'm afraid. I want to come out and talk. But you have armed people in a building holding me hostage inside over a call a neighbor made with no evidence at all. So you guys are just going to sit here all day until you get a warrant to break my door down and get me. I don't want you to either. We want to come out there. I'm afraid you have people in the building. Okay, then let me just discuss with my wife because she, she's looking at me and I can tell that she doesn't want this to go on any longer. And she's afraid, so give me just a moment to talk to her. Okay, we're going to come to the door now. We're going to unlock it. I'm going to keep my bottom lock locked so that as soon as I walk out, I need to pull the door behind me. How am I going to do that without my hands in the air? But, but how am I going to pull the door closed behind me? Okay, you're going to allow me to shut my door to my apartment? I'm not leaving my door open. You don't have a warrant to come in. I'm coming out, which is what you want, but you can't come in. Officer, now I understand you're not going to allow me to leave. I'm trying to come out to talk to you, but my door can't shut? My door can't be shut? I can't, I have animals in here. I'm trying to keep you safe. I know, but I have animals. I'm responsible for them. I can't let them run out. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to go show you I have an animal. Just one second. I'm coming to the window. Here, do you see a cat? Do you see this? This is why I need to shut the door behind me. This one runs and will not come home. These are indoor only cats. Yes, we're coming out now. We're coming out the door. I don't think you'll step away, but we have to shut the door behind us because we have animals inside. We are afraid for our life, but we are complying with what you're requesting.
we just need you to allow us to come outside to express what is wrong. We are on our way out. There's hands up. We're going to shut the door behind you. Trevor later told me that the Whittier police employees, after searching their persons, demanded entry into their apartment to ensure that no one inside was injured. Trevor complied with this request, and after sweep was done, the Whittier police left. Fortunately, Trevor and Christina weren't assaulted or shot, though I'm sure they won't soon forget this incident. What went well in this situation? Trevor and Christina realized the value in letting others know about their situation. They reached out for help, and they streamed. Also, they did well communicating. Trevor articulated their hesitancy to come out, both to the police present and for their stream, in case something did go down. What could have gone better in the situation? Firstly, if the neighbor didn't call 911, reliance on a course of monopoly needlessly escalates situations. Secondly, the response by those made aware of their situation was fairly centralized. What if the email sent by Trevor and Christina had not been seen for hours or for days? Might the situation have had a different conclusion? Far better than hoping that no police interaction ever happened and then if it does, sending an email to one inbox would be to proactively connect with others in their community. There are numerous groups in the LA area. Those folks are much better situated to respond in real time. Also, other apps, such as Peacekeeper, should not be overlooked, as it could have been used to inform their trusted neighbors and friends and family afar of their distress. In stark contrast to the centralized model of today's policing, which claims to protect by demanding obedience and continually ratcheting up the initiation of force, peaceful, positive solutions happen from the bottom up. I encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to reach out and connect with those already active in your area. Establish communication and rapport. Also, download and become familiar with apps like Peacekeeper, Bamboozer, and others that maximize decentralization and transparency. Together, we are the network, and we are bringing about real change.